Hey everyone, this is Sean with Megaport, and today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how easy it is to connect to AWS using Megaport. In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover provisioning a virtual cross-connect, or VXC, from a data center of your choice into um, AWS. I'm going to show you how to select the AWS region that you're interested in uh, for your on-ramp and then also finding your ASN as well as your AWS account ID in the AWS Management Console. And we'll be specifying the VLAN IDs that we'd like to use um, as well as attaching the virtual interface to a Direct Connect gateway. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with having our web browser opened up um, we're going to be using Google Chrome, and we're going to have that open up to megaport.com. And then we're also going to have our AWS Management Console open as well. Um, so we'll want to have access to the AWS Management Console through this process. In addition to that, we're, we're operating under the assumption that the physical port has already been de deployed. You have physical connectivity into Megaport already, and this is going to be con conferring the VXC. If you haven't had a chance to go ahead and order that physical port yet, um, I'd recommend that you go ahead and do so now. And we have some articles on how to do that through the knowledge base uh, itself. All right. To get started here, we're going to want to log into the portal, to the Megaport portal. You can you can reach that by clicking the login button in the top right. Um, when we do that, it's going to redirect us to portal.megaport.com. So from there, we'll want to go ahead and get logged in. And then we're going to get, we're going to get to our services dashboard. And so the services dashboard is going to show you all of your Megaport resources that are deployed globally for your organization. You're going to want to go ahead and already identify the physical location in which you'd like to um, set up connectivity into AWS. So today we're going to be using this 10 gig interface that we have deployed at Flexential in Denver in Aurora, Colorado. And let's see, we want to go ahead and add a connection to this port. So you can do that a couple different ways. You can come in here and, and click the add connection button. It'll give you a multitude of different options. But we also have these tiles kind of available as a, um, a quick select, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and select AWS. When we do that, that's going to take us to the new connection configuration screen. And you're going to see AWS selected with all the AWS on-ramps that are available to you globally over the Megaport backbone. So from, from any um, location on the Megaport network, you're able to uh, go ahead and, and connect to any of these different on-ramps. So we're going to connect um, here locally to the US West 2 region through an on-ramp right in Denver. So we select here the, the core site data center in Denver. So again, this is just the AWS on-ramp um, that we're gonna wanna use. We're gonna select next. Now we get to the connection detail screen. So the first thing that we wanna do is name our connection. This is just gonna be a name description that you wanna give your, your VXC within the Megaport portal. I'm going to go ahead and just call this VXC to AWS, US West 2. Next field is going to be our invoice reference. So this is an optional field. Um, you're more than welcome to type in any type of alpha numerical uh, characters here, and this will show up on your invoice next to the line item. So typically what we've seen is people usually put in a, maybe a, a PO number or some sort of internal billing code. They can annotate that here in the in the invoice reference. For the purpose of the walkthrough today, I'm just going to leave it blank. Next field is going to be our rate limit. So with AWS, uh, we have a lot of flexibility in what that rate limit looks like. You, you know, within one one megabit per second. Um, options, you can go anywhere from one megabit per second all the way up to five gigs. Let's try that again. 
So the next field is going to be the rate limit. With the AWS, we have a lot of flexibility in how granular we want to make that. So these are selected within one megabit per second increments, anywhere from one megabit per second up to five gigs. Um, today we're going to go ahead and, and select one gigabit per second for that connection. Next field is going to be the preferred AN VLAN. So all of our services, they get delivered They get delivered in the form of a VLAN tag. And that allows you to have a, multiple connections on the same physical interface. And then on top of that, that VLAN tag, if you will, um, that's where you're going to have the layer 3 IP connectivity with BGP going into AWS. So if you have a particular VLAN ID that you'd like to use, valid numbers are 1 through 4094. Um, and they just have to be unique on that port. So you can type that in here. And um, if for some reason that value is not available because it's already being used, we'll go ahead and provide you the next one that's available. You can also just leave this blank and we'll auto assign that value. Next. Now we're going to get to the connection or the cloud details configuration. So this is going to be the connection details for the AWS service. And the first thing that we need to select here is what type of connection that we want. So this is the type of virtual interface or VIF that we're going to use to connect to AWS. And our options are public or private. A public VIF is used for directly accessing things like S3 and other public facing um, services that are available within AWS over a private uh, direct peering. So if you select public, a um, couple things. One, that's going to require manual intervention from Amazon. It could take up to 48 hours. You're also going to need public IP addresses, um, and you can use either a private or a public ASN. If you use a public ASN, it just needs to be owned by your organization. Private is um, the exchanging of, of private RFC 1918 uh, address space. This is what's going to allow you access to your VPC um, with all of your EC2 instances and other AWS services. So this is more akin to a, a, a private virtual type of data center. Um, is how this would look to the rest of your network. So we're going to go ahead and select private for today. Next field is going to be the AWS connection name. This is going to be the name of the connection within the AWS console. What we typically recommend for people is to go ahead and put in the same name that you have in the Megaport console just so you can go, you can, you know, kind of match those two items up. So let's just say VXC to AWS, US West to now the next field is the AWS account ID. So it's important for us to get the AWS account ID so that we can make sure that the virtual connection is created and, and pinned to your AWS account. So to do that, we're going to jump over to the AWS Management Console. And here you'll see that I'm logged in and has my services available. I'm going to come up here and select my name, my user account, and then my account. And that's going to bring up another tab and take us directly into our AWS billing console. So from this billing management console, the first value that comes up is that account ID that we're after. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And then we're done with this tab. So we're going to jump back over to the Megaport portal and paste that in. One thing to note, if you notice, there's a space here after the last value. You want to make sure that you remove that space and there's no spaces in place or else that could, could cause some problems. All right, next selection is going to be customer ASN. One thing to keep in mind is that you're really provisioning the AWS side of this connection through this particular configuration. So customer ASN is going to be the BGP AS that is being used by the router in the data center from which you're connecting, right? The other end of the connection from an AWS perspective. Private or public ASs um, are available. If it's a public AS, it just AWS will verify that that public AS does in fact belong to your organization. I'm going to go ahead and select 65100 is the customer ASN for the purpose of today. And now we have some additional details, BGP auth key, customer IP address, Amazon IP address. So the two IP addresses are really configuring those router interfaces on each side of the slash 30 network. And then the BGP auth key is if you want to do MD5 auth, auth on the BGP session. 
you can either populate values in these fields, uh, values that you choose, or you can just leave it blank and AWS will assign those to you. Next, and I get a summary of the configuration that we just selected, and I'm gonna add this VXC to our cart. Then I'm gonna select order. We're gonna go through and do some pre-checks. See my service, I have my um, terms and conditions here with my global services agreement. I'm gonna select order now. And once I select order now, it's at this stage that we're gonna go ahead and um, now we're starting to deploy that connection from this port in Denver over to AWS. So here you'll see the VXC shows in a deployable state and you also see the rocket flying around the mega port. Uh, so it's at this point that we're that we're going, going ahead and doing the API calls in AWS and deploying the service. While that's happening, let's jump over to the AWS Management Console. And we want to go to our Direct Connect services. So we're going to start to type in Direct Connect under Find Services. And this will take us to the Direct Connect dashboard. Once we get this Direct Connect dashboard, we have a couple different options here. We can go take a look at our virtual private gateways and we can take a look at our direct connect gateways. So in our direct connect gateways, I've already gone ahead and created a direct connect gateway that's here. Um, if this isn't something that you've done yet, right here at the top right is how to connect the, create the direct connect gateway. AWS has really um, clean straight through documentation on what that looks like. It's very intuitive as well. So you have that direct connect gateway um, once that's provisioned and you're ready to go, and you'll see the state is an available state is what you want. We're going to go ahead and select the ID. We get a little bit of information here about it. And, and one item of interest is this Amazon side ASN. So just keep that in mind for um, the future. Next stage is we're going to go take a look at our virtual interfaces. And so when we look at our virtual interfaces, You'll see a list of all your virtual interfaces here. I'm gonna go ahead and filter down to the one that, that we named, and that's the VXC to AWS US West 2. So let's select this virtual interface. You'll see the state is pending. You'll also see some various different information here as well. This is basically um, providing you some of the information from a general configuration standpoint. What we need to do is accept the virtual interface. So We've turned around and requested this virtual interface to come in to this account over the Direct Connect. The account holder needs to accept the connection. And then we're gonna get an option to say, okay, what type of gateway would you like to connect this virtual interface to? So we have the ability to connect to a virtual private gateway or we can use the Direct Connect gateway. So the Direct Connect gateway tends to be the more popular choice simply because of the level of flexibility that it provides. With a Direct Connect Gateway, you're able to go ahead and connect multiple VPCs in different AWS accounts, and even across different AWS regions, to share that same Direct Connect. So when we select Direct Connect Gateway, we take a look at the dropdown. This is the one that we were looking at earlier, and we're going to accept the virtual interface. We'll notice the state changes to pending. We have a couple things in here, Amazon side ASN. This is the AS that you're gonna go ahead and establish your BGP peering to um, from your router plugged into the data center. All right, so at this point um, on the AWS side, really this is all that needs to occur at this point. Now that we've accepted that virtual interface for all intents and purposes, the AWS Direct Connect Gateway is reaching out and trying to establish a BGP peering with this IP address right here. So let's jump back over to our Megaport portal. We'll notice that the VXC is now changed to a configured state. So we can select that VXC. We see that right here underneath the configuration um, connection configuration details, we see preferred AN VLAN is populated, 1779. So that's the VLAN ID that we want to tag the service with on our router that's connected into this port. And then we're going to take a look at the AWS tab. 
and we're going to get a brief warning that just tells us, hey, if you make any changes to this, um, that will go ahead and trigger a rebuild of the service, which simply means that you just need to have access to the AWS console and go back in there and accept the interface again. So we're going to select I understand. We won't be making any changes. We're just here to look at some information. We see the BGP auth key has been, been populated. We see the customer IP address and the Amazon IP address. So at this point, you're ready to configure your router that's plugged into the port. You're going to go ahead and configure it with the VLAN ID that we previously mentioned from the previous screen. Your AS is going to be 65100 in this circumstance. And then you're going to have your IP address of your interface um, or sub-interface on that, on that VLAN tag is going to be the 169.254.44.70 with a slash 30 subnet mask. And then the Amazon side will be .69 and, and there um, will be the BGP speaker configuration that you set up. So really at that fo at, at this point, that is really it. You're ready to rock and roll and go ahead and configure your router uh, for the BGP peering. And as soon as you do that, you will be um, up and running and exchanging traffic with AWS. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to check out our knowledge base um, where this video is at along with multiple different articles on, on how to perform various steps within the Megaport. You can also reach our 24-7 network services support team by clicking on this chat bubble in the bottom right-hand corner, and they're happy to help you out at any time. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.